Hi, I'm Karen, and this is The Learning Circuit, where we learn about basic electronics. Today, we're gonna to talk about Arduino. Arduino is an open source electronics platform made up of both software and hardware. If you're not familiar with the term open source, it basically means that all of the schematics and code are available and accessible to you, the maker, and you can look at it and modify it all you want for free and completely legally. Arduino is also a series of boards with a wide range of functionality, and the software enables you to be able to use the same programs for multiple boards. Arduino boards are often referred to as microcontrollers, especially the Uno, as opposed to an SBC or a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi. Now that's kind of accurate. Uh, Arduino boards typically contain a microcontroller chip, and then the rest of the system is kind of built around it. The truly great thing about Arduino is that it's designed for beginners. You don't have to have experience in programming or electronics to be able to just dive right in. Let's talk about the hardware. Arduinos are designed to be easy to use by people that aren't familiar with electronics. So a lot of Arduinos have headers on them so you don't have to solder, you don't have to know how to solder to use them. You can either plug your components right in like that, boop, look at that, LEDs right in, or you can integrate it with a breadboard and put your components on here and then hook them up with hookup wires. Arduino is quite popular and has a huge online community. So there's a ton of projects out there and a lot of them include circuit diagrams and schematics and sometimes even photos of what the components look like on a breadboard, making it easy to follow along and try yourself. If you're just getting started with Arduino and you're not sure which board to choose, the Uno is a really great place to start. This one came in my Arduino starter kit, and the link for this will be in the description below. While Arduino makes a lot of boards and products, the Uno is probably one of the most popular and widely used. Let's take a closer look at what's on the board. The Uno has both a power jack and a USB port that can be used to power the board. You can also technically power the board directly through the pins. The Uno can be easily programmed by hooking up to the USB port. It can also be programmed via the ICSP header with an AVR programmer. The board has ground and voltage pins that can be used to power components in your project. The pins are well labeled for ease of programming. The Uno has lots of I.O., both digital and analog, and some capable of PWM, so it's really versatile and will work well for a wide range of projects. I feel I should point out that the I.O. pins have a 5 volt voltage limit as well as a current limit. The board has a reset button, so if something is buggy with your program or project, you can easily reset the microcontroller without having to mess with the code or a computer. This Uno has an LED to show when the board is on, as well as an LED that can be used in programming. As you can see, the microcontroller chip is in a socket as opposed to being soldered directly to the board. This is nice, because that way, if something happens to your chip and it burns out, it's easy to replace or you can swap out the original with a pre-programmed chip rather than having to reprogram the whole board. There are holes for easy mounting when it's used in a project or just to hold it steady while prototyping. Like Arduino hardware, Arduino software is designed for ease of use by a beginner. You don't have to be a programmer to be able to use it. So Arduino uses its own IDE, Integrated Development Environment, and that's based on the programming language C++. But like I said, you don't have to be familiar with C++ to be able to use it. What's nice about programming in Arduino is you can do it online or offline. On the Arduino website, there's an online editor that you can use to write your code. Or you can download the IDE to use offline on your desktop. And what's really great is it's cross-platform, so it doesn't matter whether you're running Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, it works for all of them. With other hardware, writing code and implementing it onto your hardware can be a multi-step, complicated process that's not great for beginners. With Arduino, as you can see here, there's a list of boards already integrated, so you can select which board you're using, and it'll automatically import the libraries needed for it to talk to that board. In the Arduino IDE, programs are referred to as sketches. So here are some example sketches. If you go under File and then Examples, you can see there's a bunch of basic ones where you can blink an LED, you can use digital pins to do a bunch of other things, you can use buttons and other blink functionality, analog, sensors, displays, there's all different kinds of projects and all of the layout for these you can find online uh, on the Arduino website. 
So it's a great way to get started. Once you have your code written and your board hooked up to your computer, you can upload the code by simply just pushing this little arrow button on the IDE. Boop, super easy. Now, I don't have my Uno hooked up right now, but if I did, the LED would have started blinking on the board. Here's an overview of a lot of the Arduino boards available. They have a wide range of features, functionality, and power. Boards can range in RAM from two kilobytes to eight kilobytes. You can have anywhere between 14 and 54 digital I.O. pins. You can have digital, analog, PWM pins. Most Arduino boards have Atmega microcontrollers integrated. They're also quite compact. On average, they're two inches or 50 millimeters. So what else makes Arduino awesome? Well, the software is free and the boards are pretty inexpensive. And Uno is usually around $25 and you can usually get a Pro Mini for around $10. That's pretty cool. Arduino boards are versatile. If you use it in one project, it's easy to pull out and use in a new project. You can use them to sense your environment. You can use it to sense heat or light or motion, you can hook it up to the internet and have it tell you when someone tweeted. You can also use it to affect your environment by hooking it up to motors, servos, relays, LEDs, or again, the internet. You can have it tweet something. Arduino boards are great for using as the brain of your project. In fact, they've often been used to control 3D printers. You can also use them in textile projects because there are Arduino boards designed specifically to be sewable and fabric friendly. Other Arduino boards are great for connected projects because they have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Ethernet, and or NFC integrated right into the board. Arduino boards also run off of a low voltage of five volts, which means that you can run it off of a USB plug and that's it. You don't need some custom power supply to make sure that it works. The Arduino hardware and software being open source means that you can look at the code and the schematics and really dig in and see how they work. It also means that there's a big community out there that are helping develop both the hardware and software. So you don't have to rely on just a small team to make developments. The developments happen much more quickly and so you get more awesome faster. Because of its popularity, there are a ton of products that are Arduino compatible, like NeoPixels, which are sewable LED circuit boards, or breakout boards. There are a ton of these. They're designed specifically to plug right into the Arduino. You can use them to make your projects more permanent by soldering directly to them, or you can use them to add features like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. As I've mentioned, Arduino is quite popular, which means that there's a ton of projects and information and community support online. Check out element14.com forward slash Arduino. And what's really nice is those projects have a wide range. You can find projects and information from the most basic, easy beginner. You don't have to know anything to get started, but they go all the way up to expert, difficult projects. So there's plenty of room to grow. Well, thanks for sticking around to listen to me jibber jabber about Arduino. If you have any questions about Arduino, or if you want to share your knowledge and experience, or talk about your projects, be sure to visit the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!